Hello, I'm back. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are concluding the second part to this video of part two of the age of Aquarius and understanding Aquarius. So if you haven't seen part one, please go back and listen to part one's recording on my podcast and then um, come to this video. If you are new to this video, please, or to my channel, please um, hit the subscribe button and share this with anyone that you think would benefit from it. Um, and also please, of course, advise them that this is real talk. It is real talk. So um, that being said, let's get on with part two of Aquarius. So Aquarius in itself, um, in a dark way, can be very misconstrued and they can twist and distort the meanings of things um, back to people in ways that can be very, very destructive. And uh, we are seeing a lot of that as um, different generations are now being born in the age of Aquarius, which is what we're now in, where we see a struggle of power, where the boomers came, um, Generation Z came, um, you know, all these different generations are all kind of like updating human consciousness. And the problem is they tend to override the one that came before it and not hold respect for the ground that they're standing on from the versions of humanity that made sacrifices for them to be here. And, um, and it's kind of quite scary as we head more into the age of Aquarius through the iPhone and kind of fragmentation that we're all so detached from each other. And this also skews reality as well, where we live in avatars and then project the avatars back to each other in a way that isn't real. It's not, it's, it's modified. The other day I heard something that really was quite disturbing, which was that um, the average child now growing up would um, never actually be able to trust an image that they have seen and not know that it was um, edited in some way. So whether that's being like photoshopped or enhanced or whatever, this all ties into Aquarius, which is like, how do we do it better? How do we streamline it? How do we modify it? How do we evolve it? A lot of them are architects. A lot of them are engineers and they're engineered that way. Aquarius in general are very um, mysterious and they're very detached to some capacity they want to help, but at the same time, push you away. And that can be very difficult in a relationship with them because they may go periods of time for periods of time where they may not speak to you around the house or they may, um, it's just, look, it's just their brain. It's just the way that they are. It's the way that they're psychologically wired. Um, they detach, they go, they shut down, they need space, lots of space. And I, I think that's fair to be fair because one of the things I've learned is space creates tension in a relationship, especially with these um, individuals, because if we were up in each other's face all the time, then we wouldn't like there'd be no spark because it would just like smothering Aquarius. Aquarians, much like Sagittarius, need freedom. They need to feel free. And they're looking for a mind that can help accommodate that level of freedom in ideas. Um, so that's why they, they go towards such challenging partners. That's just kind of like how they're fixed that way. They don't have um, a materiality, materiality complex. They understand that physicality is illusions, um, some of them. And then the others are completely the opposite of that. They need materiality. They're all about consumption and um, making money and getting money in the bank. But much like myself, I've come to understand the concept of money is is not like a like a gold bullion kind of in the Western days out the back in a bank. You know, banks don't really keep a lot of coins and cash anymore as we kind of move into, um, you know, downloadable content world now with no CDs or DVDs. Money itself is just a, a number on a computer screen on a server somewhere. And if somehow extra zeros were added to that, well, then I can bypass time and energy and time and energy is 
is monetarily measured. So it's quite interesting. Um, Aquarians are very good at measuring things in general. The best thing I could say to you guys, if you're listening and you're light-sided, is just figure out what your gifts are, figure out where your passion is, because that's where your gifts are, and then just start moving in that direction as quickly as possible. Um, one of the things that I talked about in the previous um, part one was the concept of Luciferian consciousness. Um, very, very uh, connected to Aquarius. Like Satan is very, very connected and interested in Aquarians at this epoch um, of our existence because he knows that um, that under the guise of advancement with each other, it's also the erosion and destruction of traditionalism, which is like destroying rules and sometimes like we need we need some level of structure without structure everything will collapse without bones the body can't stand and so a lot of fucked up aquarians have this mindset where it's like form has no function so anything could be anything and so this is where it leads me to something that i'm going to say in this video i'm just going to tap on it gently i'm not going to go too deep into it but basically um mother nature has been long has been here long 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 before we were and if we're an extension of that then there has to be some respect to that but as humans would like to advance we like to see ourselves as gods or beyond that of what we are and this by the way causes a lot of problems for humans because we create false idols we idolize false gods we create godheads and now we're worshiping the technology. And that, by the way, is also going to always be in the betterment to companies and tech companies and AI and, uh, of course, the pharmaceutical industry. And so one of the things that happens with form follows function, uh, which I can share with you, is that it, it's a path that I'm already seeing. And it, this is the first time I've talked about this. So... Um, Basically, we can take something that it's naturally meant for and from our own sense of self-concept and how we see ourselves, we can change that and shift that and distort the function of something to our will with no regard for consequence or a yield of what that change does. This was seen a lot and is seen a lot in gay culture or in homosexuality which was, by the way, I'm only talking about this from a perspective of observation, not of a judgment. I'm just bringing it up in the video here, okay? So it would be that um, two men are in love. Yep, that's fine. Two women can fall in love with each other. That's fine. Um, but here we have the, the thing is that for a man to have sex with another man, then changing um, the functionality of a body part and modifying it and making it into an entry point or something else outside of its natural realm and stretching and for some might say mutilating another person's body is actually an act against the natural world. As we saw a lot with Christianity, this comes up a lot around, um, around Aquarius in general in the, in the astrological understanding of form follows function. Say for example, um, putting your finger in your nose or putting your finger in your ear. It wasn't designed for that. So willing a vagina to be inside someone's body part, their ass, their anus, the asshole, that is obviously, um, it's something that you're enforcing it to be beyond its natural state and wanting it to be as such will not change what it is. And there is consequence for that. Also with Luciferic consciousness, looking at this in relation to the Antichrist, this is what he loves because it is a mockery of what he would call natural order of like man and a woman having sex. But to men having sex to Lucifer is a mockery of that and the breaking down of that. It's a perversion or sadomasochism. Uh, so that would be something that comes up a lot around this sign as well in relation to changing something um, beyond its natural state or function into something that we choose it to be 
without regard for what it, the consequence or the cause of effect of it. Obviously, the consequence of two men, or of two, a male and a female having kids or having sex would be the procreation. And of course, procreation is, of course, replication, which is part of the natural process of humans having the continuation of um, you know, of their gene pool. So this stuff is the stuff that comes up around Aquarius. A lot of these social constructs versus natural constructs versus all of these different constructs. And then playing with the rules of that and kind of in a way, in a really terrifying way, it is that the concept that we can shift um, or play with the setting dial of what we are and turn it on and off like a light switch. As we are seeing now in the age of Aquarius, a lot of these really obscure and performative and interesting characters are starting to emerge into public um, notoriety and consciousness um, as they are kind of uh, a parody of humans back to humans and then making a mockery of something that is natural back to itself in a way that's entertaining and coming under the guise of don't discriminate against me because this is what I am. So I'm barely scratching the surface here. I'm just bringing this up for a conversation point that comes up around Aquarius, which is playing around with natural law, playing around with AI, playing around with changing the world, modifying things, modifying food, genetically enhancing food, um, you know, microplast, anything, anything to do with um, the change and shift of the human experience or the human body, whether it's blending with microchips, AI, um, and then eventually what it will head into, by the way, the transgender movement is being pushed by a lot of this, um, uh, a lot of pharmaceutical companies are getting a lot of, um, you know, obviously subsidy monies to be made out of this type of thing, which is what drives people through capitalism and this way of being can sometimes become or is becoming the way to get attention. And so it's a very, very dangerous game that we're starting to play here as we start to move from homosexuality into transgenderism, into transhumanism, which is where it will go. Then it goes from transhumanism into AI, and then from AI we go into OI, which will be um, organic synthesized organs, which is what they're already starting to play with as well. So I don't want to freak a lot of you out too much. Um, a lot of people might go, oh my God, this is freaking me out. But I'm just bringing it up in relation to Aquarius because these constructs are very interesting to Aquarius and being in the age of this sign, it's, it's basically what is going on here right now. So it is, um, it is pretty intense. Now, I see it from all angles. I understand it from all angles. If there wasn't room for evolution, then we wouldn't have evolved to the point we've gotten to now. But we'll often find it'll be playing around, as I've learned as um, being in the occult, playing around with the laws of things and bending and twisting things and manipulating things has consequences. The same with playing around with energies and things like that. So I, I know this firsthand and I've made videos warning people about playing around with these types of things. And perhaps the law of identity isn't something that we can play around with either. This is a great conversation piece to uh, address and look at. Um, and it is commonly talked about from some capacity. So the opposite to the tarot reference that I'll give here would be the number four, which is structure and pillar and dependability in four. It's building something stable in the emperor card, also in the four of wands card in the tarot. So the opposite of that is anti-matter, anti-life, the destruction and chaos of stability, the destruction of a nuclear family, and then changing it into something else. So it will lead us where it leads us. I've already spoken about where it's going. <laughs> it's pretty obvious where it's going to lead us. But for those of you that don't know that, um, I'm just bringing up that point there to you now is that this is what is going on here. And perhaps that's what it is. You know, it is what it is. Would this have gone any other way with humans? I've spoken to counsel above me and that's, they kind of said, no, this is where we're going now. And it's something that you're either going to be on it or you're not going to be on it. 
but either way it will affect you and the outcome and the yield of it will become what it becomes. So I'm not going to go too much further into that or entertain that too much, but I'm going to go more into the human elements of the video, which I'm going to get into now. And as I would say, if you don't already know, a lot of, um, a lot of Aquarians are very, very complicated. You know, they are so complex and a lot of them really have some really amazing viewpoints and opinions and their ideas are so valued. Um, if they're prepared to do the work and not just be like a mouthpiece for power or um, like pushing an agenda. It's very important that Aquarius does the research and builds up the framework for their argument so that when they present their argument, it is sound and it makes sense. Anything that I um, bring up, I'm always able to explain in any capacity um, because that's fundamentally important and I'm able to sit with someone and hold space for them as much as they have a different opinion to me. Um, it's I would learn more from someone that is different to me than someone who thinks, um, you know, differently to me. So I hope that made sense um, because that's how I'll grow too. <laughs> it's kind of a thing. So Aquarius, in terms of what it is, a lot of them set very impossible goals for themselves, very, very hard on themselves that are just so high to reach. Uh, they have this idea of a utopian world. Um, like a lot of them are very focused on humanitarianism and trying to be progressive and change things in the world and create movements. And, can, you know, considering the water bearer holding the jug, um, he doesn't get wet himself. <laughs> he is slightly detached. And of course, the water meaning emotions is that he contains emotions. And in the 11th house or the 11th sign, this is really what it is. A lot of them have incredible imaginations. A lot of the greatest writers um, are also Aquarians. A lot of them are very good at writing. There is a thespian side to some Aquarians, depending on where their chart is but they want to go high and they have this kind of um, progression where they want to go to a place that brings liberty and equality no matter where they are in the world. And so it's quite interesting to see how they develop um, and whether they pursue following their paths or um, being like a people pleaser, which I kind of mentioned back in Aquarian A earlier in the video. Um, the equality involved in sharing with an Aquarius is that they prize nothing really specific. So what was important yesterday may not be important today, but they're always trying to kind of push themselves in a direction of like, how do I improve? How do I upgrade? How do I upgrade myself? How do I encourage upgrading like an iPhone? The old version of me has to become obsolete so the new version can come in. A lot of them don't like being like, a lot of them uh, are not, <laughs> there's an interesting relationship with them because it's something that I struggle with myself as an artist where we have this story that we might tell ourselves of pain and then we use the pain to transmute or, for, or push and drive the story arc. Um, this is something that I've got friends around me that have been kind of trying to convince me isn't healthy. I think that if it's the way that you came into being an artist, then that's okay. But I don't think long-term living in that way of thinking and making art through your pain is healthy. I think it can become a bit of a dilemma for you as well. So they're always kind of um, analyzing, processing and trying to quantifying everything around them. They're kind of like um, Data, that robot dude from Star Trek. You know, they... They are trying to create the best way forward, but their biggest problem is they lack humanity Some, or they're trying to get closer to humanity, but at the same time are detached from humanity. And in that form, it's because he was a robot. Obviously, he just doesn't have a soul. It's interesting. I often think do people that were made in tanks or people, not more, well, I guess that's happening at some point, but you know, the idea of tampering with natural law, what happens with soul, you know, is a clone um, not being a natural being, does that mean it has a soul? This type of stuff is very fascinating to Aquarius and, you know, an intellectual Aquarian would be very focused on that. 
they're like a patchwork of shadows as well. Um, they're very rigid and quite deta- like cold, detached. Um, and then the, some of them are just really in their light side. If they're light sided, they're very social. They want to be out. They want to see the world. They want to have a good time. One of the problems that happens around them a lot is that they have that hypocrisy thing that I've mentioned before, where they'll um, promote veganism, but yet they'll eat meat or they'll say they're anti-capitalist, but yet they wear Nike shoes. So it's something that they have to be aware of is that if you're projecting an image, then you have to actualize that image through your own life first. Um, Prometheus comes up a lot. Uh, he was like the rebellion against the gods to the cost of his own detriment. You know, he had to sacrifice and suffer. He was the one that brought fire or the power of fire, much like the water bearer kind of archetype to Aquarius, where he betrayed the gods and gave humans fire just to see what they could do with it. And then, of course, he was punished for it. So anyway, this is a lot to unpack. Part one and part two. Part two is a little bit shorter, but this was the profile of Aquarius. Um, I have touched on a lot of different issues, a lot of ideas. And given, hopefully, if you're an Aquarian or maybe if you're just listening to this video, a lot of different perspectives and angles to look at the sign and understand them because you can't love someone until you understand them. When we understand the being that is before us, only then we can love them. The perfect analogy that I always go back to, and I'm going to do it again in this podcast, is if you had a jellyfish in a tank, you love the jellyfish, you understand that it's a beautiful creature and it's in the glass tank and it's got its freedom or it's got relative amount of freedom in the tank. It's there, you love it. But if you understood that if you took it out and hugged it to give it your love, your version of love would actually damage the or kill the jellyfish. So when we understand the being, it is best to allow the being to be what it is and love it from afar by understanding what's in the being's best interests. In this analogy, it would be leaving the jellyfish alone in the tank. So I'll leave that for food to thought, food, well, thought for food, food for thought, whichever way. <laughs> Um, please leave comments below if you enjoy the video, like, share and subscribe. I will be taking a little bit of a break and I will be continuing a new series um, or maybe just something that kind of takes my fancy as the next topic um, and see how I go. But I do have a lot of work to do on my new kids book, which I'm working on. As you know, I'm making books now, writing kids books and illustrating them. So any support would be much appreciated um, and I will see you in the next podcast as we push off into the future. I'm signing out Aquarius. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Bye. Bye.